so good morning everybody hello students today let's discuss about the important vitamin which is biotin so vitamin is uh, vitamin h is also known as anti egg white injury factor which is biotin now what are the salient features of biotin it exists in biotin form biocytin form and carboxybiotin form so this is a sulfur containing vitamin mind it it is not a sulfur containing amino acid so what are the sulfur containing amino acids we know cysteine and methionine are sulfur containing amino acids so this is a sulfur containing vitamin it is synthesized by the intestinal flora and it is involved in the transfer of carbon dioxide now what are the functions of biotin it is acting as an enzyme cofactor for fatty acid synthesis energy production and gluconeogenesis so this is your basic structure of uh, biotin with an imidazole ring and a thiophene ring with a valeric acid attached to it and what are the dietary sources uh, what are the sources rich sources of biotin egg yolk is a very very rich so, uh, egg yolk uh, milk and egg are very very rich sources of biotin other sources are soya bean peanut liver and vegetables now what is biotin antagonist there is an antagonist which is going to inhibit your biotins what is this avidin which is present in egg white which will bind to biotin it will prevent the absorption of biotin leading to deficiency of biotin so what are you supposed to do you are supposed to boil the egg which will neutralize the inhibitory activity so biotin and avidin will be strongly bound and it will not be able to di get digested by the pancreatic enzymes so when there is prolonged exposure of this avidin and biotin it will lead to deficiency of biotin so the crux of this is you'll have to boil egg and take now how is it metabolized you i told you there are three forms one of the forms is biocytin which is converted to biotin by the enzyme biotidinase and this is absorbed by facilitated diffusion and this is excreted in the urine in the form of biotin sulfons or binor biotin now what is the coenzyme activity of biotin it is acting as a coenzyme for all the carboxylation reactions mind it there are also carboxylation reactions which do not require biotin now what is the mechanism here carbon dioxide is involved and the gen there is utilization of atp your biotin is converted to carboxybiotin meanwhile what is happening your substrate is getting carboxylated the functions of biotin or the enzymes which utilize biotin are acetyl coa propionyl acetyl coa carboxylase propionyl coa carboxylase pyruvate carboxylase methyl crotonyl coa carboxylase all carboxylases require biotin so this is the reaction acetyl coa is converted to melanine coa the rate limiting step in fatty acid synthesis which requires biotin and propionyl coa to methyl melanyl coa the enzyme is propionyl coa carboxylase again here which requires biotin next pyruvate carboxylase pyruvate is getting converted to oxaloacetate this is also a biotin dependent reaction it is a substrate for tca cycle and it is also rate limiting enzyme for gluconeogenesis that is the reversal of glycolysis the last step of glycolysis is formation of pyruvate and now pyruvate is getting converted to oxaloacetate which is gluconeogenesis methyl crotonyl coa carboxylase is converted to methyl glutenyl coa carboxylase it is uh, seen in leucine metabolism what is leucine leucine is a branch chain amino acid that is valine leucine isoleucine all three are branch chain amino acids so they they'll involve one carboxylation step uh, so when biotin is deficient this will be uh, this uh, will not be occurring so what will happen there will be isol uh, in increased levels of hydroxy isovaleric acid and it will be excreted in the urine now i told you there are also biotin independent carboxylation reactions what are they carbamyl phosphate synthetase purine synthesis and malic enzyme carbamyl phosphate synthetase is seen in urea synthesis and pyrimidine synthesis cps1 and cps2 addition of carbon dioxide to c6 of purine synthesis and malic enzyme uh, malate to pyruvate uh, this is also acting as a source of nadph now moving on to the recommended daily allowance uh, adults 30 to 300 micrograms per day high requirement is uh, uh, essential for alcoholics and patients who are under dialysis now what are the causes of malnutrition any vitamin you take there are different causes from the diet to your intestine to your absorption to the transport part so let's see one by one first is your malnutrition you're not taking a uh, sufficient amount of biotin in your diet leading to 
malnutrition deficiency of biotin then there is malabsorption you are taking the biotin in diet in sufficient quantities but it is not getting absorbed properly because of some deficiency in the intestine for example gastrectomy and there are also some uh, biotin antagonists i told you avidin you are taking a, a biotin in large quantities but it is not serving the purpose you are getting deficiency again why because you are taking to 20 egg whites per day and uh, especially raw intake of raw egg is not advisable uh, avidin present in egg white is going to bind to biotin and it's going to inhibit biotin leading to biotin deficiency and there is also another cause idiopathic uh, uh, it's not idiopathic iatrogenic that is prolonged use of antibiotic which is induced by the doctors for treating some condition it will flush out all the intestinal flora and it will lead to biotin deficiency parenteral nutrition pregnancy parenteral nutrition also same pregnancy and burns now what are the manifestation how does the patient manifest to you to the uh, opd or the hospital with biotin deficiency they will be presenting with weight loss anorexia and they will have dermatitis that is erythematous rash in the face glossitis will be there that is inflammation of the tongue and there will be hallucination depression and lethargy neurological symptoms and teratogenic defects also like bone abnormalities birth defects so let's see the biochemical basis of all these manifestations one by one now pyruvate is getting converted to oxaloacetate by the enzyme pyruvate carboxylase so this pyruvate carboxylase is a biotin dependent enzyme when biotin is deficient what will happen this step will not happen so pyruvate will not be converted to oxaloacetate so all the pyruvate will be converted to lactate leading to lactic acidosis this lactic acidosis is going to affect your central nervous system and cause neurological symptoms next i'll tell you the cause for dermatitis uh, uh, acetyl coa carboxylase is a biotin dependent enzyme which is going to convert your acetyl coa to melanyl coa so this will result in uh, reduced fatty acid synthesis so when fatty acids are not there phospholipids are not formed so decreased phospholipids phospholipids are required to maintain the texture of skin right uh, so what will happen there will be inflammation and irritation of the skin leading to dermatitis I'll tell you the teratogenic effects, biochemical basis behind formation of teratogenic effects due to vitamin H or biotin deficiency. So whenever biotin is deficient, it will lead to decreased phospholipid formation. There will be decreased prostaglandin synthesis, and there will be defect in bone growth. Now, how will you diagnose biotin deficiency? Patient who present to the OPD with dermatitis, with hair fall, we don't think about biotin deficiency. We just treat them symptomatically. But this should be kept in mind when you practice also. So you'll have to check the biotin level in urine and blood, and it will be low because you have vitamin uh, H deficiency. Your urine, what will happen? Your three hydroxy isovaleric acid will be elevated, and lymphocyte isopropionyl CoA carbon. place will be low now what is biotinylation it is attachment of biotin to a protein or other molecule so what are the uses of biotinylation it is also used for diagnostic purposes and research application in elisa we use biotin coated anti antibody yes in the well 96 well elisa plate we use this biotinylated form next is research application you'll have to study the protein interaction and dna replication we require biotin now enzyme linked immunosorbent assay is your elisa where biotin related antibody is fixed to the well and sample is added that is sample is serum sample containing the antigen is added added and avidin is conjugated with hot radish peroxidase which is also added in the next step and you will see a color change that is formed so this is the use, diagnostic use of biotin the functions or applications of elisa are it is used for estimation of insulin uh, thyroid stimulating hormone prostate specific antigen detection of other uh, antibodies and antigens of hepatitis b virus hepatitis c virus hepatitis a virus or uh, human immunodeficiency virus or aids so there are various applications of elisa during the process or each one step there is biotinated biotin that is uh, utilized now moving on to therapeutic application when a patient comes with hair fall you pay, you give some uh, like iron supplements you give uh, biotin supplement vitamin supplements to strengthen the hair that will contain your vitamin h or biotin so alopecia is uh, treated using 
biotin supplement and dandruff which is seborrheic dermatitis which is a common symptom or common presentation in your dermatology clinics patient with uh, seborrheic dermatitis the biotin is deficient and diabetes patients who present with neuropathy biotin can be supplemented to prevent neuropathy and also to control blood sugar okay to summarize uh, biotin is also known as vitamin h or anti uh, egg white is the factor and uh, what are the sources egg and milk you can remember this 3200 micrograms per day is your recommended daily allowance and the biotin antagonist is avidin which is going to bind to biotin it's going to cause your inhibition of uh, the function of biotin leading to deficiency of biotin so it has both the diagnostic and therapeutic application diagnostic in elisa therapeutic application for strengthening of hair alopecia seborrheic dermatitis and for control of diabetes and there are symptoms what are the symptoms dermatitis how dermatitis because no phospholipid formed because of no fatty acid that is synthesized no fatty acid no phospholipid the skin texture will be lost and there will be irritation uh, and there will be inflammation of the skin and there will be um, hair loss also there will be neurological symptoms because of accumulation of lactic acid because pyruvate carboxylase is a biotin dependent enzyme biotin will be converted to uh, sorry pyruvate will be converted to lactate and not uh, oxaloacetate so lactic acidosis will be presenting feature and uh, neuropathy will be setting in so this is my video on biotin in short any doubts you can just uh, ask in the comment section thank you